Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. I was going to go in the house and I was going to chill out, but for some odd reason, I just got a little buggered about some things that have been bothering me for a long time. And you know, our career field is a lot like many career fields. We are constantly changing and evolving and there's certain bad habits that got to change too. And I've named these things, uh, these habits something, and I'm, I'm not that proud of it, but let's just call it old versus new biomed habits, okay? And this is something that has been evolving in every biomed shop I've been to for the last, let's say, five to ten years. You know, some hospitals got started earlier than others, but this is an initiative that many hospitals are maybe not even doing yet. And I'm going to go over some of the old versus some of the new things that are happening in biomed shops. So I've got my assistant here. You going to say hi? Mm. <laughs> All right. She's not going to, I just got home and she's not going to let me do a video without her being here. So my uh, beautiful little assistant here, she's going to help me out. So the first thing that I want to talk about is paperless processes. Old versus new biomed. New biomeds are generally moving towards paperless processes. And the old biomeds still like their paper checklists. They still like their paper work orders. They still have racks full of paper manuals that nobody ever touches. And I, I'm serious about this. Now, if you're doing uh, anesthesia or something like that where you go through a checklist to do your PM, more power to you. 99% of all those manuals that are cluttering up all the walls, wall cabinets and stuff where you can actually organize your test equipment, maybe organize some of those parts that you use more often, they're just full of old binders of equipment that you probably don't even have in your facility anymore. So paperless processes, it's something that we all got to get used to. I use Google uh, Forms for doing templates and stuff, which I can share with multiple people. And I also... Obviously, we have uh, electronic work orders. Most places do now. Some places still do manual work orders, and that's your smaller shops. But guess what, guys? It doesn't take very much money to start a paperless system. And, you know, there's a lot of innovative solutions out there for, like, CMMS systems. So if y'all are still working off of spreadsheets and, and paper work orders, you might want to upgrade. I'm just saying. So that's number one. Number two, do you know what that says? Parts. Yeah. Okay. Parts. This is kind of a big one, guys. Every single biomed shop that I've ever been to, there is hordes, hoarding, hoarding of old parts. And the worst part is, if you guys have seen some of my videos, you know that one of the things that bugs me the most is old parts. Because they'll write like old, good, or old, bad. Do you know how many old, bad parts I've seen? Like, I'm talking even like xenon light bulbs you got a 200 300 light bulb but you can clearly see it's a matter of fact it's even got some of that uh conductivity compound over the lens but somebody just put it back in the box and put it back on the shelf like it's a part we're gonna keep it's so crazy and, and what's even worse is when you get to like power supplies so you know power supplies are a hit or miss thing don't keep old power supplies not unless it's something that's very specific you know you're going to use it again and you know because you measured it that the unit that you have is good power supplies have electrolytic capacitors they have a shelf life there is a life expectancy on these things and after a while they do go bad parts so in the modern day biomed shop we keep fewer parts around because logistics are better than they've ever been before it's magical and I understand that there's some items that are going um, out of style. They're not making parts for them anymore. By all means, keep one or two. But remember, as biomeds, part of your responsibility is to nurture the progression of the hospital. I know a lot of hospitals pretend like they, they don't have money, but believe it or not, if, they, if you encourage them because you're having a lot of failures on something, don't keep Band-Aid fixing it with a bunch of old parts. At some time, you, if something isn't made anymore, they don't make parts for it anymore, quit hoarding those parts from units that you're turning in. At some point, you have to cut them off and be like, hey, we, we, we're, we don't have any more parts for this. You guys got to buy new. Nurse call systems, you guys know what I'm talking about. I know it's a big expense, but 
oh, nurse call guys hoard so much stuff. And I get it. They don't plan because usually when you do nurse call, you want to do a large blanket purchase and, and do it all in one stage so it's all compatible. I know. I've been there. Nurse call systems. I've uh, There's still systems that have like the telephone, you know, with the push button like, like hotels and stuff to ring each room. There's still nurse call systems like that out there all over the place, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? So, all I'm saying, guys, is parts, components. Oh, my gosh. Now, me being an electronics nerd, if you guys can't tell, I love components, all right? I love components. But when you walk into a biomed shop and there are bins full of 20 or 30 or 40-year-old components, I'm talking like some of the first IC chips, the entire CPU, and you've got a whole bin full of these CPUs. It's like, wait a minute. When was the last time we had 8086 CPUs? How often did they go bad? Why do we have 20 of them in slot 26 on this on this uh, bin system? It doesn't make any sense. Or you might have electrolytic capacitors. I already brought it up. There's a shelf life. I can't tell you. Every single biomed shop I've been to has old capacitors and old transistors and stuff just sitting in these tiny little shelves and as an electronics nerd i love it it's awesome i would love to take them home and goof around with them and maybe build some cool stuff but that's not how we do business anymore a lot of the components have evolved they've changed a lot of the connectors have changed if you have nylon type connectors like molex connectors guess what they get brittle with age and that includes if you're not using them so we're not going to pin an old molex connector that's 20 years old you're gonna let it go so guys uh, that's number two parts parts are different now we keep minimal parts we try and organize the shelves of parts that we have sometimes I keep a couple old devices if I know for sure I'm gonna use these parts in, in probably the next couple months after that we cut it if I'm not gonna use it in a couple months trust me it's gone that those devices are gone so if anything if I save an item for parts it's because I've already got another item that I want to upgrade Let's say I've got a front bezel on a ESU and I'm going to turn this ESU in, but the bezel looks awesome. I'm going to save that because during my PM sweeps, I'm going to find another one that looks a little junky and I'm going to pull that bezel off and change them out. It's, it's rare. It does happen. But hey, that's, that's old versus new. We don't keep very many parts around, guys. Shipping boxes, right? You like boxes? Yeah, you like boxes. Shipping boxes, guys. I'm telling you. Every single hospital I've been to, old biomed mentality. Let's save a mountain of shipping boxes and never use them. Why? Because the new mentality is, often enough, a lot of vendors have moved to shipping you a loaner or loaner replacement, and it comes with a box. But in the back room, you'll have six of those same boxes stacked up. Why? Why do you have more than one box? And, and furthermore, why even have a box? There are hardly any vendors I know of that you can't call them up. Yeah, what's up with that? There's hardly any vendors I know that you can't call them up and be like, hey man, can you next day me a box? I got a unit that I got to ship back to y'all for repair. And they'll do it. Almost every single vendor will do it. And I get some vendors have expensive boxes. In those cases, maybe you want to save that box. Depends on your failure rate. If it doesn't fail that often, don't save that box. I, it's just crazy. I understand some of these boxes are seven or eight hundred dollars, and they got special foam. But if you're not doing like an annual PM replacement type of system, and you're just waiting for maybe someday it's gonna fail, ah, don't keep that box, man. Those boxes get old and grungy, and they encourage infestations and stuff, man. It's just it's dirty and it's really messy, and that's old mentality. Shipping boxes, minimalize it. All right, guys. Old test equipment, right? I think that's what that one says. Is that your writing or is that mine? No, it's definitely mine. <laughs> She's three. Uh, old test equipment. Oh my gosh, guys. As biomeds, especially as senior level biomeds, it's you guys' duty to sit there and petition management when things get old. Like test equipment. You have to... I'm, I'm talking... We got old decade boxes. You have old like temperature gauges and stuff oh my gosh old uh contact uh, tonometer or not tonometers but uh, uh tachometers just old old test equipment i kid you not man i i wish Mwah. okay you gonna go 
Okay. Old test equipment. It's, oh my gosh. When I got to this hospital, I took the decade boxes because I kept getting fails on some of my calibrations. And I was like, what the heck is going on with these? So I actually took my meter and I ohmed them out. And wouldn't you know it, I was off by like four or five ohms. And if you even touch the switch, just lightly touch it, like the values jump all over the place. Now, a lot of those micro switches, they have like, um, I don't want to call it a contact grease, but it's something like that. And it dries out and it changes values and they get old and gunky. It's a $200 decade box. Why are we using a 25 year old $200 decade box? As a senior level biomed, when you see that some of your equipment is getting old, your test equipment, that's your credibility right there, that old test equipment. And many of these devices, many of them, their values will change just based on the temperature of the room because they're so old and they're, they're temperamental, uh, internal batteries are failing, all sorts of error codes when you boot them up. Old test equipment. It's the worst, and it's your credibility going right down the drain right there. But that's because a lot of biomeds out there just kick the can down the road. They're like, well, it works. We might as well just keep using it. Don't don't say, like, your tolerance might be way off. And, and then a lot of people are like, well, our third-party uh, test equipment calibrator says it's good. That's a whole nother video. My opinions on third-party test equipment calibrators, hardly any of them do a thorough job. Hardly any of them. It's it's a whole nother video. I've given a whole cartload of test equipment to one of those third party calibrators, and I kid you not, 45 minutes later, he said it is ready to come back to my office. 45 minutes. Really? 45 minutes. And it's ready to come back to my office? What'd you do? Did you check my multimeter in that time? What'd you do? Ah, these guys. That's a whole nother video. But anyway, let's get back to it. Old test equipment. Senior level biomeds. If you start seeing some of your test equipment getting old, you got those calibration weights or something and they're all corroded, get rid of them, man. Just get rid of them. That's your credibility going right down the drain by using that old ass test equipment. I've seen photo tachometers where the, the light that illuminates the, the spec, it is, it is so dim or it's funky, it doesn't give you a steady reading, but in a test equipment environment, it works just fine. It's like, just get rid of it, man. Get another tech. Test equipment is technically a consumable. It has a life expectancy. And if, you're, if your equipment that you're testing has an expectancy of eight to 10 years, guess what? Your test equipment probably does too. But here we are, we're using some of these old Medi testers and stuff that were built in like 2000. Now I love the Medi tester. I was born and raised on it, I swear to God. But at some point, you gotta be like, hey man, why is it every other time I boot this thing up, it's got errors? Just saying. So old test equipment, old versus new mentality. The new test equipment has such cool features too. Now I know I've done some videos about old versus new test equipment lately and uh, I, I'd love to say that it grows on me, but it really hasn't. These things are so, just such a pain in the ass to use. But they do have some cool features, and when I go through and I edit the test, which, let's spend $7,000 on an analyzer, and then have me spend one or two days reprogramming it so it's usable. Does that make any sense? Not to me. But that's for another video. Um, they do Bluetooth out results in a formatted form, which is very cool. And once my, my hospital figures out their, their CMMS system and, and we actually get something that works, <laughs> not Nivolo, um, attaching these forms to work orders is going to be a pleasure. I know it will. I've used so many other systems and they work just great. Maybe even a finished polished version of Nivolo uh, will be better than, than what I currently have. But in the future, I plan on utilizing these, these formatted uh, templates and submitting my results that way so that's another video too we'll talk about that some other time but the new test equipment does do some really cool results and uh, the modern day biomed test equipment talks to either your iPad or your phone or whatever and you can record those results and it looks much more professional
So, that's old test equipment. Old on-call habits. Guys, oh my gosh. So here's the thing. Biomeds, when you are on call, you are setting a precedent for all the other biomeds, all right? What I'm saying is if you come in for something absolutely ridiculous that you could have solved over the phone or something that you could put off as the user's responsibility, it's your duty to train the user if you, if you encounter those situations on what the proper procedure is, not just to run in and do it for them because you are setting a bad precedent for the other on-call biomeds. And, and yeah, you might be experienced enough to do it, but in every other biomed shop I've been to, like most of the people might be clueless about something. So guys, when it comes to on-call habits, coming in for small issues, it's such a old biomed habit. You wanna be the guy, the man. But I'm telling you what, don't set a precedent for your other fellow biomeds, especially the junior level biomeds, all right? We wanna keep it as detailed as possible and we want to service our clients but at the same time you know if it's the user's responsibility to go down to central sterile and get a cable I'm not gonna come in and get you that cable here's a short story at one of the hospitals I was at you some of you guys that are watching this are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about I was the only biomed that was voicing my frustrations because the on-call biomed had to come in and we had to call security to let us into this locked room that was the operating room's room, okay? I didn't have badge access to it. I had to call security to let me into the operating room's storage room to get a microscope out, an optical microscope, and I had to take it into the operating room for their emergency procedures. That was what the on-call person was doing. Historically, for years, they had been doing this, where they'd been coming in, They'd been getting this microscope out of storage after contacting security and being let into the room when the solution was simply this. Either store the microscope someplace around the operating room. If it's an emergent item, it needs to be in or around the operating room. Or B, get somebody trained like your night shift people, night and weekends, get them trained and make sure that they have badge access to get in that room. It's the operating room's storage room. Why are the biomeds coming in and letting you get a, an item out of their own room? It's ridiculous, man. But that's one of the things. That's an old mentality, the kick the can down the road thing. If there's a problem and you see it, you're supposed to voice your opinion be, through experience. Like, hey, guys, I know that you've been doing this forever, but hey, sometimes this doesn't make sense. Our career field's evolving. You have to do things more efficiently. You have to save time. You have to save money and resources. Every time you come in, that costs money and resources. Not to mention, you could be tired. So if you really do get an emergent call later on that night, you're going to be too tired to go to it. Or, you know, you're not going to perform as expected. So that's just another one. On-call habits. Older biomeds just have this habit of just coming in and solving every problem in the world when, honestly, you might be able to train the user over the telephone. All right? Some of these, some of these guys... Just love coming in and getting that overtime and just racking it up. But that's fine. But you're setting a precedent for everybody else. So I'm just saying, old versus new habits. And one of the last ones I'm going to talk about, issuing cables out to users. Now, this is something I've noticed changing in uh, biomed shops all over the place. And it's, it's probably within the last five to eight years I've noticed this trend where we're putting the cost and the responsibility of stocking cables on the users and on the central supply. Biomed doesn't magically have this warehouse of cables where we're issuing out cables. You're setting yourself and your department up for failure. Now maybe at some smaller hospitals it works out a little bit better, but at larger facilities there's some real problems with Biomed issuing out cables. For one, cost accountability. If you have a director that's having to pay, you know, $3,000 every month towards SPO2 cables, it can happen because they're throwing them away or something ridiculous, then that's on them. And the director is going to take notice of it and they're going to start teaching their people not to damage cords or not to throw them out. Now, Biomed supplies those. It's just not only is it like 
taking us, we're a more expensive labor rate than most of the hospital. You know, technically senior biomeds cost more than, than nurses. So if we are out there just running cables around, that's kind of an admin function and, and resorting to putting that back on the user. You are decreasing their downtime, you're increasing the cost accountability, and you're gonna get a lot less work orders. So you can focus on things that really matter, like doing proper rounding and maintenancing your equipment. Every hospital is stacking up like old broken medical equipment. If you resourcefully change around your processes so that you're not issuing out cables, you'll have more time to fix that equipment. So anyway, guys, that is my list of things that are changing between old mentalities and new mentalities. And I hope you like this video. I know it's a long one. Man, I could ramble on about this because uh, this is just something that I've been seeing change over the last couple of years. Some people are resistant to the change and you have to admit to it. Sometimes change is really good. Sometimes it's bad. It affects us all, but Guys, these, these are some things that we all got to work on as a group and as a profession. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I think 60 to 70% of my viewers are not subscribed. Subscribe down below. And I've got some other videos that I am making a list of stuff to sit here and record for you guys because I got some crazy stories and I got some crazy other situations. And I got some equipment teardowns and stuff that I want to bring to you. So... I'll see y'all next time.